Alright, what up everybody, man? It's your boy JK today. It's Thursday, so you already know what it is. It's Tackle Thursday with JK live on IG. But today I got a special guest, and before I bring her in, we, me, and my special guest, right? We and you, those that are watching, we're gonna tackle the topic today. I celebrate Juneteenth, right? Um, so I, I couldn't have planned it out any better. Uh, uh, actually, um, doing it today, I celebrate Juneteenth, and, and Joe Biden signing, making it, declaring that it's a national holiday. Uh, you know, I try to, I really listen to my wife and try to follow her lead. Man, she, if you don't, you know, if you follow my wife or you don't follow my, go follow her at Brittany K Moments. Um, she does a great job as an influencer and a blogger. Um, but one thing that she's been teaching me is just the importance of, you know, uh, making relative content or, or you know, thinking about themes. And so when I seen that this was the month of June and I seen Father's Day, but then I seen Juneteenth, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely want to want to want to do a Tackle Thursday on that. And so when I knew that I was going to do a, a Tackle Thursday about Juneteenth and just touching on that, I knew that there was someone I needed to bring on, and that was my special guest. I'm going to go ahead and allow her to let me make sure she get in. Let me see if it, uh, daughter free, you in. <laughs> I'm in. Wait a minute. Let me get the camera right. You, know, you good. Question. You good. Let me make sure I turn the volume up. Yes, I can see you. Can you see me? Yeah, it's all good. Yes. 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 Gotcha, gotcha. Well, right, so so I, I want to introduce you, give you, I, you know, it's so many accomplishments um, that you have and so many great things that it, it'll take all show to go through each one. So so I'm going to do my best, and then I'm going to allow you to kind of, you know, introduce yourself. But right now I got a special guest, uh, Miss Dina Gordon, but she goes by, no, not Miss Dina Gordon, Dr. Dina Gordon, but she goes by Doctor Free. So when we work together, she's like, "Hey, just, just, just call me Doctor Free." I'm like, "Hey, that's, hey, that's, that's a cool <laughs> name right there, Doctor Free." Uh, and, and like I said, man, she is uh, so accomplished, and and, and I'm gonna try to do justice uh, by her and, and, and introduce her. Right. So Doctor Free has devoted her life to guiding others with encouragement, direct instruction, and life coaching. She knows that everyone has the inherent potential to live their best life and become the best version of themselves. She's an educator. She's an author. She's a life coach. She's so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Dr. Dina Gordon, a.k.a. Dr. Free. How you doing, Dr. Free? Wow. <laughs> what do you say after such an introduction? Thank you. I appreciate your kindness and thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to come and share. Who knew back when, you know, that we would be having this moment now. But I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No problem. I, I thank you uh, for just even saying yes, being willing, um, and, and getting on it. And to your point, like you said, uh, who knew, right? Because we didn't even work together that long um, no. as far as when we talked about days, weeks, and months. We, we didn't right. even work together that long. But the impact that you made on my life. Uh, wow. Just, I wasn't even in education at the time. I wasn't even thinking about going back to school, right. but me being an educator now, it was things that you said, we'll get into that, but things that you said that impacted me um, in such a way as an educator. And, and also just from being an African-American person, being black. Right. And, and, and you it was I feel like you 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 imparted me with some wisdom, some things that was like, OK, Jeremy, now you need to be more woke, you know, and, or, you know, what I'm saying you need to be more conscientious of, of just making sure that you're deliberate about learning your history. And and uh, and I just remember going through your uh, resume when you had applied. I'm like. Man, she overqualified. I'm like, what, what's she doing? I'm going down degree, degree, degree. I'm like, oh, man. But you know, one thing I, I, I like about you coming, it was like, it was, it was, it was, it's kind of like if I use it as a sports reference. It's like, okay, I got my all stars, but you got championships. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know what? If she rub off on me and teach me some things, I could have some championships too. 
and that's and I and I like that challenge, you know. And it wasn't like a competitor, but it was like, yo, I'm learning, I'm growing as a person when I come to work because of things. So I, I definitely um, appreciate you coming on. I really do. Uh, and so definitely, I know I, I introduced you, but but tell the people a little bit about yourself. Though. All right. Well, I'm a, a native of Nashville. I'm a okay. Native of Nashville, Tennessee. Wow, what can I say? Where can I begin? Um, I don't, I like to separate who I am mm-hmm. uh, uh, differently from what I do because I'm not what I do. I'm separate, right? Who am I? I'm a, I like to say I'm an authentic being. And my desire every day is to live in purpose and on purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's what brings me fulfillment. And when I'm fulfilled, then it has that ripple effect to everybody around me as well, right? Now, what do I do? <laughs> I do a lot. I do a lot because it, it makes me happy to yeah. read, to stay active and to be involved. Um, I'm an educator. I'm a spiritual teacher, a life coach, a blogger, an author. Uh, let's see. I'm a Reiki master. I um, I do a lot of different things. Right? Yeah. I, I try to put myself in a way where I can help other people. So I like to say I'm involved in the ministry of healing. I don't know if anybody ever told you that or not, but you're involved in the ministry of healing as well. Okay. Anytime somebody leaves your presence feeling better than when they came, guess what? Healing just took place. Definitely. I, I never looked at it like that. Yeah. That's I appreciate of, so that. So many of us were in the ministry yeah. of healing and don't recognize it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Definitely. Yeah. Now, I, I, I like that you said that you differentiated between who you are and what you do. Um, I did Attack of Thursday on that, uh, that we are not what we do. We do because of who we are. Right? So out of Come who on. we are is why we do this and and i talk you know just being an athlete and hence what where tackle thursday comes from me actually have to be on the field tackle tackling people um i think that our identity sometimes gets tied up a lot of times in what we do we get celebrated because of what we do and then when we have to change careers or do other things we kind of lost because we're like no that was my, my my identity was tied up into that so i like how you know that hey this is what i do but this is who i am and they can intertwine but you know how to, at the end of the day, separate them. So uh, I, 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 I'm glad to hear that. And that's awesome. That's awesome. So getting into kind of what you do now, one of the things um, I, I did not know, um, I'm learning every day, you know, about you, but that you have uh, an online school called the Academy of Authentic Living, right? Could you tell us a little bit about that? And I'm so proud of that. Um, I was, it's only been up for a few months. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited about it. We got our first course. It's called um, "Coming Home to You: Spirituality 101." Yeah. And what what the school is designed to do is designed to help people to expand their consciousness. It's designed to uh, provide support to people uh, in their spiritual lives. Right. It's not religious based. But it's just there to kind of help people to provide support that they need along the way. Almost, um, in a sense, to help people who might be in, in a, a crisis of faith. That mm-hmm. may, I, I had a crisis of faith in my gotcha. life. It's like, what's, what's really going on? You know, what mm-hmm. you're challenging, what your belief system is challenging. You mm-hmm. wonder, like, well, what do I really believe? You yeah. know? And I felt really alone. Right. And I didn't have anybody to talk to. Right. Especially gotcha. when you're a leader, because I was a leader. Yeah. And leaders, you know sometimes struggle with finding other people that, that they can talk to that's not going to judge them and not going to go mm-hmm. run and tell the business and that's all true that thing. and so i vowed to myself that that when i got the opportunity when i got things going that i would create a space for people to feel safe where people could be encouraged and where they could mm-hmm. learn so they could add to their lives so they would know that hey this is a good place you're in because it's a place of transition a place mm-hmm. of transformation and and i wanted to provide something so that people would feel encouraged to go on in their journeys definitely. that's what the academy of authentic living is all about and definitely and what uh you can um you want to put the web just say the website or whatnot oh, yes, 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 yes yes now look it's authenticity okay yes, uh, spell it out authenticity dash academy at excuse me authenticity dash academy dot teachable dot com so it's a u t h e n t i c i t y dash then it's academy dot teachable dot com and you can find out more information about that as well on my website which is authentic thought dot net you can go there 
as well and find that information. Or if you go to IG, uh, you can see me there and uh -huh. you can just click it and it'll take you right to the sites. Right there. Yeah, right. Definitely. Uh, doc, uh, doc 376, or you can go to uh, Reiki. Uh, R E I K I dot for you or books by Doctor Free, and that link's there to take you straight to the sites. Definitely, definitely, and that, and and I, I, you said something because we talked about just like the feelings, like feeling, because I, I think as humans, like we can feel yucky, right? Like emotions, yucky. like yucky, <laughs> just, just like you, like man, I don't know what this feeling is. This, I just don't like it, right? And 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 I know for myself, uh, growing up. And as I grow in my faith and, and everything, I used to think that feelings um, were, I, I thought feelings were facts, right? Mm. Uh, how, I, how I felt is, is, is fact. And the more I grow and, and, and the more I, uh, God continues to, to uh, illuminate things for me, I realized that feelings aren't fact. I can, I can feel like I don't want to go to work, but... I can still push through that and go to work. Um, I can feel like I'm not good enough, but the Bible and God tells me like I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So despite how I feel, it's not fact. And I and I like now how you have a place where people could come and it could be yucky and emotions, but you can help them in process. And I think that sometimes we feel bad by how we feel. It's like, okay, these might not be a feeling, might not like, you might not want to sit in them. But you can move your way, process them, and then you know move forward. So, so I like that you said that it's a safe place. People can come and and and, and being able to uh, find guidance and get guidance uh, from you as well. And so, I met you right uh, in a different form of the field of uh, education, right? And so, um, I think that so I I kind of I feel like the term teacher is you think of just a teacher, someone that's in a classroom, right? But when I think about educator that can be anybody right mm -hmm. and so i i feel like i know you're an educator right whether mm -hmm. you were in the classroom you was at you know where we were working at or not you were an educator so what caused you to get into education and how long have you been teaching or being in education that's, that's a great question it's funny uh when i was in high school I knew that I was going to be a teacher when I was in high school. But mm -hmm. you know how we grow and evolve in our understanding about things, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a teacher because I wanted to be the one with the big desk. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to be the one to tell everybody what to do. And I, yeah. I wanted to be the one to get homework. Mm -hmm. Test times when they would do it wrong. So you want to pay back. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I want to pay back. But after I, I grew and evolved and, you know, and, and started growing up and becoming an adult, I realized that it was a drawing because of my spiritual gift as a teacher. Mm. And because I'm a teacher, I was drawn to the field, right? And and it's just made me, you know, it's it's a good fit for me, right? Because I mm. know that that's where I'm supposed to be. I've been doing it for a long time, telling my age, which I'm so happy about. I'm, uh, let me tell you, Jim. You ain't got to gotta, you gotta, you gotta drop the years on me. You ain't got to drop the years I'm on me. I'm about to celebrate the big 5-0, and I ain't Ooh. shaking. Oh, hey! Yes. I'm gonna fit you glasses. I am so excited. We getting ready to do part two, and part two is gonna be right. Part two, yeah, is yeah. Right. We're gonna take it next level, right? But I started teaching like at 21, mm. and I've been doing it almost 30 years. Yes, 30 years, almost 30. Congrats! Years. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, definitely, thank you so much. definitely. Uh, so, so. What I would say, what is your favorite part of, of just being an educator? Wow. And I think a lot of teachers will say that the aha moments. Mm. When you look in, in the student's face and you're working with them, you look in the eyes and you've been laboring with them, and then they say, Oh, that's what you mean. I'm like, Yes, you know, that, yeah. is, that is so exciting to see that they finally got it or, mm. or, um, whatever the conversation was that it caused them to think about something that they hadn't thought about before mm -hmm. in a yeah. new way, or they got insight, right? That's it. And then the next thing with that with me is not only when they get it, but I'm, I'm all about empowering people, even little people, second graders. I'm like, I, when I step back and you can run the classroom, I know I've done my job. Yeah. You know, I, I, I like to see the classroom on autopilot at the end yeah. of the year. Well, I ain't doing nothing but facilitating and supervising, right? Definitely. And so when not only when they had an aha moment, 
but when they can share that knowledge and that insight with somebody else, that's 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 what does it for me. Now, I, now, when you saying the the, uh, the aha moments and the the thinking and being able to share and teach others, I know you mentioned to me, right? Uh, I want to say Socratic thinking. Come on, yeah. I didn't say that, but you can come on. No, I'm saying I know. I'm telling yeah. you, we, we worked together. You mentioned oh, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you was like, hey, you know, let me let me talk to you. Have you ever thought about Socratic thinking? And I, and, you know, and so once, and that was before. That's why I met God. Be setting stuff up because we having these conversations before I even got into. Uh, my master's program. Okay, and so okay. then when I'm getting into it, I'm hearing that turn. I'm like, mm, that's what Dr. Free was talking about. Mm-hmm. Push the kids to think for themselves. Don't just yes. give me a, don't, don't just give me, uh, do you think Billy was good or bad? Good. No, okay, mm-hmm. go in, no, explain. Mm-hmm. Why? Why you, uh, maybe you say neither. Maybe you say both, but, but explain. And so I take that, uh, and, and, and apply that. Um, so, so what what advice? Because I I share the I think the biggest piece of advice advice you gave me as an educator. But what advice would you give a, a first year teacher, a teacher that's about to start in this school year 2021, 2022, to say first year being in the classroom? What what would be some advice you would give them? Okay, well it's, this little thing is burning in my heart, so I'm gonna share this based to respond to the point that you were making. Is mm-hmm. that my my role as an educator, as a teacher, is to put myself in a position. Where you don't need me anymore. Mm. If you always got to keep coming to me and asking me questions and, and ask me, then I haven't empowered you. And I'm not saying that I'm not making myself available. Right? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Answer questions and talk and support and that kind of thing. But but as an educator, my role is to make the uh, student more independent, not dependent. Yeah. Right? So gotcha. they can find on their own, right? And I think um, as a teacher starting out, that's something good to know. You know, you've done your job when you can do that, right? Um, but secondly, I would say for uh, teachers just starting out to learn to pace yourself, right? Because it is it can be so overwhelming. And there's no such thing as I'm finished because there's always- Always working. Hey. <laughs> and, and what I've learned about, it took me a minute to get, to get this, but what I've learned mm-hmm. about pacing myself, that means that I am fully present in the moment but whatever the task is that I have at hand, right? Because sometimes we can get overwhelmed. We're looking at the big scheme of things, right? Like, oh, I got this to do. I got that to do. Well, that's true. And it's good to have that awareness. But what I do is I say, wait a minute, this is what I'm going to focus on right now in this moment. And I'm going to do my best to give myself fully to this in this present moment. And then I'm going to the next thing. That way I am setting the pace rather than allowing the circumstances and situations to set the pace for me. Gotcha. That makes sense? Okay. Yes, and the exactly. other thing, the other thing is to to make sure that we understand that, you know, we I used to have this mindset, I'm gonna change the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come in, you know, you come in, you just like, I got this. You go um, change. You know, hear yeah. me roar, I'm gonna change the world. No, my my mentality, you know, I got I came to the realization, you know, I might not be able to change the world, but I can make a difference in this corner of the world. Mm-hmm. But now, watch this. I'm gonna add to what I told you a long time ago. I'm gonna add to this now. Okay. When I make a difference in this one life, because of way the way we exist in this world, and because I understand the, the whole concept of vibration and energy, what I do in this one person's life. It's going to have a ripple effect and it's going to affect the world just yeah. if I do what I'm supposed to do right here in this moment. Right? Yeah. It's good yeah. stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's great. So you see me a cheese. I'm like, oh, she done added on to that thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but no, <laughs> hey, no, all, all true, all facts. Um, Because that's what you told me. You said, Jeremy, you said, man, you, you cannot change the world. Like, you can't change, you're not going to change every student. He was like, you're not going to save every student. Right. It was like, but if you go in and you impact one scholar, mm-hmm. one child that day in your class, mm-hmm. you did your job. And and that, to your point, scaling stuff back, not being overwhelmed, that's like, you know what? I'm going to teach this lesson the best of my ability. I'm going to prepare. And, and if I can plant a seed in one person, like, but one person can walk out here better, I did my job. Right. right. I, did, I definitely did my job. And, you know, I, I, I definitely... Uh, Thank, thank you for that. I really do appreciate that. And understanding that every lesson ain't going to hit as well. Right? Hey, right, right, so right. to your new teachers out there, 
you could you can plan all night. You could be like, oh, I'm gonna hit it. Oh, I'm gonna kill it with this. They gonna like this. They gonna like this part of the lesson, and it might come in there and be a flop. And then the lesson that you take the least amount of time with, the kids might love. So it's all you know, a roll of the dice. Um, but like you said, definitely just one child at a time. And I like that. I can't. I might not be able to change the world. Um, but I'm gonna change this corner of the world. And to your point, the ripple effect. Because I'm thinking like, man, you impacting me. Now I'm impacting, you know, my wife, my kids, the kids I coach, now the kids I teach, the kids I see in college now that I taught last year, all off of that one seed, you know, that you planted. And so, um, to your to your point, definitely impacting, you know, more. Divine, you know. divine design is awesome, isn't it? It is. Divine design is awesome. It is. And you don't realize when you're in the moment, you know what I'm saying? You don't realize it, then it takes time. You're like, man, I met top the free before I even thought about going back to school, but it was lessons that I learned and things that I applied. And, and, and now here we are right now doing Tackle Thursday. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate that. Now, right, I want to transition okay. into something else that you do. Now who you are, something you do, like you said, right? So you're an author, right? You, yeah. you, you, you have written three books, mm -hmm. three books, one special just like me. Yes. Right? Let Imagining me, tell me, tell me, me. Give me a little tip special just like me. There you go. <laughs> special just like me. So that that that's that book. Go ahead. I'm allow you to give us the underlying message of each one. Go ahead. With a special just like me. This is the first one I did. It's been about shoot, it's probably about six or seven years now. Uh, but this book um helps um young people to understand who they are, to identify with their authenticity and also be able to celebrate other people as well because that's that's the the catch and it says special just like me so not only am i special and i recognize it in myself but i can see it in other people because i can't recognize it in anybody else until i first accept it and embrace it in myself first so that's what that one is about the second one that i did is called imagining me man we so underestimate the power of imagination Real. You doing this right here, right now. It had to start with an imagination. You see did. thinking and imagining that thing, right? Yep. And, and and then watching it come to pass. There's so many people that are where they are now because of something they imagined. In fact, everything you see, the chair you sitting in. Start with imagination. But, yeah, it starts with imagination. So we can't underestimate that. Sometimes you like, well, I don't have nothing to do. Just sit there and imagine, you know, what you want. And that's how we get to manifestation. And then this one. Beautiful Me, which I'm really proud of. Oh, my goodness. In this book, I talk about, uh, I want the children to understand um, that we're more than the outside. The outside is beautiful, right? But there's something about your voice that's like no other voice. There's something about your laughter that's like no one else's laughter. There, there's something about your presence that's like no one else's. And those are the things that on top of being beautiful on the outside as as a as a, a person of color. Yeah. The inside, that's what makes it even more beautiful. Definitely. Definitely. And I and, and so I I noticed, right, um, that even in the book, and I allow you, I'm gonna I'm allow you to touch on, on the book okay. that you are working on right now. But I noticed a common theme that you all of them had the pronoun me, right? And I was like, now, I know Dr. Free, she's intentional about everything she does, right? Authentic. And I'm like, everyone had me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I know from re looking at those books, I'm like, okay, I can kind of see probably why. But I want to hear why does each of your books thus far have the word we, in, uh, me, in, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You know, you know, you know, Jeremy, I get excited and I'm trying, I'm trying to be succinct with my comments and my nah, comments. No, nah, no, I get, hey. Get a side you know, you're, you're in my lane. You're in my lane. I'm trying yeah. to. Yeah, I'm in there. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's get it. Okay. In um the real reason, the real yeah. reason, real stuff, real talk. In 2014 summer, mm -hmm. I had the awesome privilege and blessing, the blessed opportunity to visit Kemet, which we understand we we know as as Egypt. Okay. And that's where I did my um. My the, was the culmination of my research. My doctoral uh, degree, my dissertation was mm -hmm. ca is called the effectiveness of African centered education, right? Mm -hmm. And the culmination yeah. of the research was to go to Kemet because the the uh, the the um, the framework and everything that as relates to African centered education is based on 
uh, the practices and customs and traditions and teaching and everything of ancient chemists. So I was like, well, let me get on over there. Yeah. Let's just go on and make it do what it do and uh-huh. can finish this research out, right? And so I went there. So fast forward, um, one of the, a lot of people don't realize because, you know, um, uh, we're not always credited for the things that we do in our history, right? But yeah. if you go over there, uh, you look on the temples, above the doors, or many of the doors, there's a, there is a winged disc, right? And this disc represents, it means know thyself, right? That came from us. That came from African history. Know thyself. And knowledge of self is the beginning of wisdom. I'm sure you heard that before, mm-hmm. right? Knowledge yeah. of self is the beginning of the wisdom. So that's where it came from. In order for us to really be who we need to be, it starts with ourselves, Mm. getting to know ourselves. The Mm. most important relationship we will ever have is our relationship with ourselves. People say, what about God? Well, ain't he on the inside of you? Amen. Uh Yeah. So you're not missing anything. You're not not. missing anything. You get to know yourself, you get to know the divine within. Okay? That's real. That's real. And you understand that, and you got you working on that. And you have right direction with that. It it transforms everything else. Let me tell you something. When I left Kimmy, my life was changed forever. It changed the trajectory of my life. Why? Because I got to know myself a lot more. It caused me to go inward so much more. And that's what I want people to understand. That's why I'm all about authenticity. If you go to the school, you know, it's about authenticity. Mm-hmm. If you go to the YouTube that I'm going to be up in a couple of days, but Jeremy is going to be up. It's hey, let me know. Authentic thought, right? Gotcha. And I, I want people to understand that who you are as an individual is awesome. It's a blessing. You don't have to try to be like anybody else. That's a waste of your time. That's a waste mm-hmm. of your energy because you yourself are a gift. And so I want to encourage people to be the gift that you are, right? Because when yep. you are who you are, it, 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 it encourages others to be who they are as well. So that's the message and the purpose in the books that I write so, thus far, thus far. That's that is awesome. That's deep too. That, that that's definitely deep. Um, and I and I kind of I was like, man, uh, Doctor Free really uh, wants us to look inward, you know, and look at ourselves, look in the mirror. Uh, and, and when I just when I looked at all your, you know, the titles and the, the theme of it, me, 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 uh, which is important to your to your point. And and I think just even being an African American uh, man in America, um, like I tell some people, I'm like, okay. We, you know, our people, we were, it's literally like you take a plant out of its natural soil um, and then you take that plant and then you go and plant it in some new soil. Now you got roots dangling, you losing seed, you losing all of that as you transport them to plant them into some new soil, soil that's not conducive for them to uh, necessarily grow. It's not set up for them to succeed. All of that, right? And then for myself, like my biological father, I don't know if you know, but my biological father is not in my life, right? Has nothing to do with me. So as a black man and then being a a black man who biological father, I don't have no relationship uh, with, right? Identity as a man, there's no Kellum man in the world that I can look at and be like, ooh, okay, that's I get my walk. You know, yeah, I can see a picture, but I'm talking about no, right? And this is what we talk about knowing of ourselves. Like, okay, where I get this from? Where, you know what I'm saying? What runs in my family? All of these things. So when we, I can look at my close family and say the same thing. And then we can look at our lineage and say, man, because we in school, they telling us that we dumb. But we're just, we smart. We started it. Like you said. But we don't get credit. So I, I really think it's powerful that you're really focusing on, hey, find out who you are. But also part of who you are is researching your ethnicity, your background, where you come from, where the people that you come from come from, and, and being and realizing how powerful you truly, truly are and understanding and looking at how different you are as an advantage, not as a disadvantage. Absolutely. Um, definitely, definitely. That's your, great, though. Your uniqueness makes you beautiful. You're, you are your kind of beautiful, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, when I'm talking to people, I'm like, okay, so... So who sets the criteria for what beauty is supposed to be? You know, who, what, how, who, what makes you qualified to even yeah. set the standard, right? Because yes, it's, all about, it's all about an individual. 
You know what I'm saying? And yep. who you are is totally different than who someone else is. And that's a good thing. You, yep. You're created unique. You're created yep. to be who you are, not to be a duplication of something else that already exists. Definitely. And, and, and to that point, like you said, who creates it? Well, we know, right? We know who create the stereotype or what beauty is. And I even tell my, my scholars in my wellness class, I'm like, look, be your fit. My fit is not your fit. Your fit is right. not their fit. And I right. said the standard that we, because I teach, uh, you know, uh, my class pretty full of, full of minorities. You know what I'm saying? So we all African-American, um, Egyptian, uh, you know, uh, might have Jamaicans, Haitians, right, just right. Uh, right, Hispanic. So I said the 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 standard when we're looking at BMIs, body mass, and all of right. that. I was like, that's that's not made for people of color for us. I was like, because I'm overweight. They say that somebody that's five ten um, should be. I should be like one seventy. Man, I be looking sick out here, Doctor Free. That ain't, that, ain't, that ain't for me, right? But I understand that as an African American man, I'm built different than the standard that has been created of our own European, right, men and women, that, and the same thing with women in general. So I'm, like, telling them, like, look, don't get sad because you're not matching up to a standard that was not created with you in mind, right? And, and when we're talking about body types, and we don't, you know, we don't hear that a lot in school, but like you said, who who sets the standard of beauty? We look, you know, we have all these standards, but it's really, you know, mocked after, like, we look at, you know, I ain't gonna, because it's not that type of show, but we look at people, and we say, I want this body, and I want that body, but who body are they emulating? People of color, black women, you know what I'm saying, Hispanic women, right, people, women of color, so um, definitely, to your point, man, beauty uh, really tr is truly in the eye of the behold, um, so... Mm -hmm. We'll stay. Definitely, we'll definitely. Stay. So I know you got you got a project. We talked today. You said you got some pictures back. You had, uh some printouts. Uh, I think you were saying the layout. Yeah, we're, we're in the final stages of yeah. the illustration of my latest book, which I'm. Oh, I am. When I tell you, I'm super excited. When I when I saw it, you know, I'm a visionary. When I saw uh, that thing, you know, it started with my imagination as we talked yep. earlier. And then when I saw, okay, we're in the final stretch because it's been a long time coming, right? Uh -huh. I was so excited, right? And this book is called My Emotions and Me. And I was trying not to jump into it earlier. Now nah, you good. Go ahead. Jump emotions, into that thing. But My Emotions and Me, A Guide for Youth and Their Caregivers. Watch this. Watch this. This, was a, this is what I wanted to do. I see adults a lot of times. They will have a book and they might read it with their child or their young person. Right? And Or either they'll give them the book and tell them to go read it. Right? You know, and they'll read to them is what I mean when they read it to them. But what I, what I envision was a book that spoke to both of them. Mm. One book, right? Yeah. So in the front of this book, it, it has, it's for where the, st the uh, story opens up and it's for, for, for both of them. But then the next section is for the youth. And then the next section is for the, the caregivers, the adults who take care of them. Or yeah. whoever, you know, it might be a, um older uh, sibling, it might be a aunt, uncle, whoever they live with, right? Because uh, this is an experience that I wanted both of them to have together. When you yeah, were talking about, um, I mean, there are affirmations in the book, there are uh, questions of reflection in there uh, to really cause them to go deep. I went all the way there. I, I wanted some challenging questions. I love questions, right? Yeah. I wanted challenging questions that cause them, you know, have to sit with it, and and so they can talk about what they're gaining from the book, and then they can share with a young person, you know, because we we all are, should be learning together as a as a family yes. unit, as yeah. you know, as yeah. as as with people that we care about, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if I could say this, is that our emotional well-being is so important, right? Yeah. And you were talking about emotions earlier and how your emotions are not facts. But if I could add just a little bit to that, yeah. to talk about the mm -hmm. significance of the emotions. Now, what I've learned about emotions, our emotions are like street signs, right? Emotions mm -hmm. tell us where we are, and they help us, and they give us direction and tell us which way we need to go. You feel me? Yep. So it's like this. Um, say, for example, that you're feeling angry, right? A lot of us, sometimes we can get angry and just be like, I'm mad. And, you know, you want to take it out. Okay, but stop and name. First of all, name that. Because, see, sometimes it takes us a minute to even acknowledge that we are angry. I mean, that was something, something that I was dealing with in my life because, you know, it's not cool to be angry. Because you don't Fact. want to come out being an angry black woman mm -hmm. or an angry black man. So you yep. just can't. And we've learned in this society because we have to deal with so much stuff. You yep. know, we can be ticked, but, you know, we're at work. So 
you know, we you know, we gotta hold it in and you know, we gotta find another way to deal with it, right? Cold switch. Yeah. Come on, talk to me right there. So so <laughs> it took me a minute to get in touch with that myself. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm angry, right? Yeah. For naming that emotion. And then once you name that emotion, in that moment, once you learn to do that, you can say, oh, okay, now you can make a decision. But we can't change what we deny or what we yeah. don't acknowledge, right? That's- and when you understand that your emotions are there as an inner guidance system, right? Because if you're if you're having an emotion that's manifesting a feeling that you don't like, well, once you identify what that emotion is, you can switch, right? And make yeah. a change and go in a different direction. But you can't do that if you're in denial or if you're not in touch with yourself or yes. if you're not in touch with your emotion. Y'all been talking to somebody and they laughing and they or grinning and they don't even realize it. You know, yes. that's because they, they're out of touch, right? Or okay. somebody that's worried or anxious, full of anxiety, and you can see it, but they don't see it because they're out of touch. But guess what? I mean, that's not a judgmental thing. That's the thing to say, hey, that can be changed. Hey, you can turn that thing around. By, by understanding what our emotions are all about and how I ex watch this, I experience my emotions, but I'm not my emotion. Gotcha. That's I key. I experience them. That's key. But I am not my emotion, right? Yeah. And when I understand that, then I don't I don't get into this judgment thing. And the way I see it, the place of revelation that I have for me along my journey, is there are no good emotions and bad emotions. They're just emotions. Yep, just emotions. Right? Because yep. the minute you start thinking that the emotions are bad and you say that I'm the one that's having the emotion, then you start condemning and judging yourself. You see what I'm saying? But yep. if you just say, hey, this is emotion, then I'm experiencing, I'm feeling. And what I need to do is I need to let that thing come up and through me. Yeah. I need to let that emotion flow through me. If that means go talk to somebody, if that means go outside and holler real loud. If that means cry it out. I tell the little boys in my class all the time. I say, look, boy, let me tell you something. Don't let anybody call you a punk because you're crying. There's yeah. nothing wrong with you showing your emotions. You got yeah. tear ducts, them little holes right there in your eye, baby. Yeah. That's so for you can a cry. You, you got them for a reason. Yeah. They didn't give them to the females and only and not males too. Yeah. And ain't nothing right. weak about you crying, right? Yeah. It's okay to be in touch with who you are and yeah. to see them the the love that they that they receive and how that makes them feel comforted. That's an awesome thing, mm-hmm. right? So we got to learn, you know, about our emotions and, and, and understand that they are part of our human existence, right? Yes. That's what it, it means is. to be a human being, right? And learning how to manage them without our, ma- our emotions managing us. And I'm, I know you can tell, I'm just really excited about this. Nah, hey, and, and hey, I'm, I'm you passionate about, about it, though. You right. Yeah, I'm about to say, you writing that from the heart, though. Cause you experience yeah, it, her. and I think that's I think when you come from experience or whatever, like content or anything somebody put out, yeah. when they come from experience, and and you got that passion behind it, and you can relate mm-hmm. because you experienced it, you went through it, and you can offer solutions um, to how you got through something. I, I think it makes it that much more uh, impactful. And, and and man, just you're so you're so right about emotions. Um, and I know I keep going back to the subject I teach with wellness. Um, and we think about well as being just physically well. Like I, I got muscles, I'm in shape, I got a mm-hmm. good, you know, heart rate, all of that, right? Um, and that's awesome, but 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 also emotions. And I and I I use this movie. I watch this movie with my high schoolers, Inside Out. I don't know if you ever seen it, the kid movie, Inside Out. Is it oh, is it real old movie? No, nah, no, nah. it's a, okay, it's a, no, it's, a not, it's a Disney movie. It's probably like four years old. Check okay. it out, Inside Out, right? But it talks mm-hmm. about emotions. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and and the whole movie is led by joy. Right. It's showing what's going on inside of a little like 10 year old girl. It's a it's a cartoon, but it's re- very good. But to your point, we have good emotions and bad emotions. So the one emotion, joy, is trying to keep out sadness, fear, uh, uh, disgust, trying to keep out it all because she's looking at them as being bad. But yeah. the moral of the story is at the end of the day, the kid needed all of the emotions. And they needed to be able to feel. And in the movie, when she was trying to suppress certain emotions, it just made her worse as a person. Mm-hmm. She was trying to ignore it, and it just took her down, right? But she needed okay. all of them. And, and it's just so important. And even, like, talking to the young men, which is so good that you tell um, young men that because, like, I heard this point, and I say this as well, like, real men cry, real men don't whine, right? And that's, ah. people, that's people in general. 
right? People, we all, we all feel pain. We all go through things. So I can cry and I need to cry. I need to tap into my emotions. But whining is I'm waking up and I'm telling you about, I'm coming to work. I'm telling you about the same problem every day. And I ain't trying to change it. I ain't trying to fix it. All right, okay, you can come and vent to me. Maybe one, two days. You might need a week, depending on, you might need a month, right? Depending on what happened. But eventually, it's time we got to be able to tap into those emotions, process what we're feeling, understand, okay, I don't like this. I don't, whatever, like you said, acknowledge that we're feeling this, but we can't become our emotions, right? And that's how we become the woe is me, right? We sit in it and woe is me, nothing. So I, I, I really, really like that. I, that theme and that message in your book um and the fact that parents you know and I, i'm gonna get your book too because me and my wife we, we 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 support black entrepreneurs black businesses um but but, but just great books in general right um and and, and so we we want to read uh to our two little kids uh your books and 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 really talk to them about themselves and empower them and we do self-affirmations with them as well so Definitely, uh, we will be in touch. How can I get your books? Let's, let's, let's go to how can okay. how can I get your books? Uh, the best way is to go to um, you can do xlibris.com and that's let me make sure I, it's x x and then l i b r i s xlibris.com. You can go there and you go to the bookstore and go there, or you can just go to uh, my site authenticthought.net mm -hmm. and then go to the uh, books page and then you just click down and um, the first one says get now click on get now the book covers will come up and, and click get now you can get them that way at authentic fault.net they're available that way um you said when you were talking about emotions i just think it's so important um jeremy for us to just really understand how significant um, emotional well-being is to mm -hmm. our total well-being right and to be able to have both the young person and that caregiver uh, experienced that book together. I mean, mm -hmm. just the thought does my heart good. In fact, um, there is a special edition that I put in the book in the, at the back, um, mm -hmm. and it's called Pain. And I put that in there especially for the adults that I that I'm just hoping that it just blesses so many. Um, yeah, I just know I because the the insight I got is that every time an adult read it, healing will manifest. So I'm just really excited about that. That's good. I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you. You're doing amazing things, great things. Uh, just, you know, just everything that you offer. And uh, one thing I, I, I truly believe um, you are, you know, you're walking in purpose. And, and what I mean by that, and sometimes, you know, somebody could say, oh, you're doing too much. You're doing this, doing it. Not if you're in purpose, because when you're in purpose, mm -hmm. you could be a life coach you could be an educator you could be an author and all of everything you said that you are doing have the same things it's about being authentic being in purpose right mm -hmm. uplifting encouraging uh having an introspective you know look into yourself about being better and being who you truly are fully and being created to be so um you in purpose with everything the books the online um, class uh just being an educator so 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 salute to all that you are doing um i i, I definitely want to make make it to this uh last transition uh, <laughs> and, and and like i said when when i thought about Juneteenth. So so those that are on Tackle Thursday, you know, every Tackle Thursday I have a topic and, and I say it's tackling. We're gonna tackle something. And so one of the topics uh is uh and Caitlin keep uh salute you in the chat. Uh, I don't know if you remember Caitlin when you was working that she played basketball. Uh, oh yeah 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 so she all through the chat shot wow. you out. She said she's gonna much get your books much love, everything. Much love. Let's definitely, go. definitely. Um, so when I thought about Juneteenth, and I'm like, look, I thought about getting you on for Black History Month, and then time kind of got, you know, passed. So I, was, I thought about Juneteenth. I was like, oh, man, I got to talk to Dr. Free. Um, and, and you kind of talked about some of the things about, uh, you know, just going to Egypt and, and, and Africa in general. Um, and so for those that are watching or will see this on replay, um, right? So Juneteenth, June 19, 18, 1865, um, was actually when the the uh, last enslaved um, African Americans were set free. Now we know that the Emancipation Proclamation was signed 1863, right? So we say that's when we were, you know, slave free, uh, slavery was ended. However, it still was two and a half years later that people were still being enslaved. So it was two. That's two and a half years longer. Someone 
was being beaten. I'm pretty sure people were killed. People got raped. All these things kept going on, even though it, it wasn't um, supposed to. It, well, none of it shouldn't have happened. But um, the point is, um, so we celebrate June 19th, right? And uh, so my question to you is, what comes to mind or what came to mind? Because, you know, through the years, because I know you're so in touch. Um, what, what comes to mind when you think about June, June 19th, 1865? Well, for myself, initially, you know, I didn't grow up with the understanding about Juneteenth. I was uh, an adult when mm. I understood uh, what, what it was all about and everything. Mm. And even then, uh, my knowledge was limited, you know, because mm. it's okay. I knew, you know, it was a day that we should acknowledge and that type of thing. And honestly, now that I've studied a little bit <laughs> and it comes to mind, um, I have mixed feelings, actually, about the whole thing. Um, honestly, when I think about it, I'm thinking, hmm, modus operandi, <laughs> which means uh, uh, business as usual. You know, they're a uh, European method of operation. You know, it's um, it's another another saga, another sad saga in our history. You can look at it and say, yeah, we were free and that kind of thing, and that's something to celebrate. Mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, but that doesn't negate the fact that we shouldn't have been in bondage in the first place, mm -hmm. right? But and so I have I have a lot of mixed feelings about it. Um, as I study, because I look at it and I say, okay, well, um, during uh, the Civil War, Lincoln declared the Emancipation Proclamation, which allegedly was supposed to free the slaves. Yeah, allegedly. Okay? Now understand that Lincoln was the president of only the Union. Mm. He was not the president of the Confederacy. That would have been Jefferson Davis. So who was he talking to? He was talking to the South, supposedly, but we know that's not what happened. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. Okay. And then he was supposed to be talking to the Union as well, but, you know, it wasn't necessarily, you know, it was more about him talking to the Confederacy. But at the same time, there were some states in the Union that had slaves, but he excluded them yeah. from having to abide by the proclamation. So I'm like, well, okay. And then we got, so what is a proclamation? And I, I love how I was thinking about this. That was basically an executive order. <laughs> We know, we, we're familiar with that there, right? Yeah, we, we understand yeah we're familiar, what executive yeah. orders mean, right? Uh -huh. We understand that. So I'm thinking about that, and I'm like, Okay, and so 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 what? And then we go up. It was like six months later. That's when the Thirteenth Amendment was passed, which allegedly, once again, was supposed to um, abolish slavery. But we know that was written with a clause. Clause. That yep. clause is we Breaking won't treat law. you like a slave unless you commit a crime. Yep. And that's why folks that are in jail get treated or in prison get treated like slaves because yep. of this in the 13th Amendment. And so it's like, and then that's when they put the slave codes in place so that um, so that you can still have slavery, yet but by another name. You know, just the whole yeah. bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. And so I have a lot of mixed feelings about mm -hmm. it, but at the end of the day, if everybody needs something different mm -hmm. in order to receive healing, in gotcha. order to move forward. And if this is going to help people get healing mm -hmm. in their hearts so that they can move forward. If they need that recognition, you know, for a holiday, if they need that, then so be it. You know gotcha. what I'm saying? And I'm not going to mm -hmm. take that from anybody, right? Yep. Now, me, myself, I, I'm not, not negating somebody that does or doesn't, mm -hmm. but I, for the way I see it, black history is American history. American history. And we, I, have to, and we, and we study it all oh, year. I don't need Black yeah. History Month or One Day or whatever. I can celebrate who I am and mm -hmm. and and what black history means without that. But I get excited when I see people celebrate life. You hear me? So if this is if this gonna help you celebrate life, then you go yeah. on and you do this and celebrate life. If I you know what you. and no matter what capacity I see people doing it, some people need to go down here and be with friends at the club, celebrate life. I'm not judging you. That's what you need. Celebrate life, right? If you need to do a party, if you need to celebrate this holiday and that holiday, you do that. Whatever's mm -hmm. going to make you better, whatever's going to help your emotional position, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever's going to help you move forward. Definitely, definitely. Now, I um, I know 
I know for me personally, uh, just for our Juneteenth, um, I, I never celebrated, to your point, like never really knowing about it till you were an adult. I never really knew about it until I was an adult and didn't celebrate until last year. Um, and and me and my wife made the, the decision um, together to this is what we're going to celebrate in our house. And um, as far as, you know, for the July, our for the July, we're going to celebrate that on June 19th. Now yeah, that's, with our that's, kids. that's a good point that you were making, because that I was thinking, you know, because July 4th was for the European. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so if 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 black folks feel like, OK, this is going to be my new form. Yeah. July, this is going to be my this so be it. You know, yeah. I'm not judging anybody. Everybody can do whatever they want to do. Like you said, you and your wife you made that decision for your family mm-hmm. about what yeah. you want to do. This will be it. Definitely. But to your, and also to your point, though, like you said, it doesn't erase what uh, what was done. I mean, even when I'm reading the story or looking, I'm like, so you telling me it took two and a half years for the message to get to Texas? You know what I'm saying? Like, it took it took two and a half years for it to get to them to say, okay, y'all really, really free. Like two and a half years. And I think about just how many kids went two and a half years longer without reading. How many people went two and a half years longer getting beat. Uh, and then I just, even I look at our, us, like, I don't know what age you were when you found it, but me at 30, that's my first time. Yeah, I was about 30 something. I was about yeah, 30. Yeah. 30. 30. It's 2020 and I'm just really finding out. So it's, it's so much history. Even when I, you know, working at, you know, uh, with kids and I started to prepare black history things and learning about Black Wall Street. Yeah. Like, learning about just so much of our history and how you said, like, we're not giving credit for it. Uh, and then the message that gets, you know, poured down to us as far as being inadequate, not good enough, not smart. But we, you know what I'm saying? We, where you look at where math and, 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 man, we come from the Kings, Queens, intelligent people. And I know you, like, just remember our conversation, you remind me, like, yo, like, this is where we come from. And I, and I, and that's why I think in your books, you remind it, look, find out who you are. Like, get in touch with who you really are. Like, if you knew, like, think about it, like, now, if a kid is born to a mathematician, you're like, man, I know I'm smart. You know, or I'm good at numbers because you know where you came from, you know, mm-hmm. so. Um, definitely when we, so you mentioned it earlier when we talk about just education, um, and this will be the last question. Yeah. I'll kind of open may, up may, I say, may I say something before you go ahead? Me? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think as it relates to Juneteenth and whatever we do, yep. we have to be able to know our why. Mm. Why is it that we do it? So you want to celebrate Juneteenth? Good. Yeah. Know why you're doing it. Yeah. Just I got don't you. do it because everybody else is doing it. Just don't do it because it's a federal holiday. You know, do it because you know why you're doing it. Don't just go along with the flow doing what everybody else is doing. It, but be able yeah. to stand in your own truth, whatever that yeah. is, your own sovereignty, yeah. and make that decision for yourself. Yeah, I definitely. just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Definitely. And whatever nah, nah. that is, that's your business. Most it's definitely. all good. It's all Most good. Most definitely. Now, I, def- I definitely uh, agree with that. Knowing why, right? Knowing Knowing, if we're going to get up and, and represent something, know what you represent, right? Know why you're doing it, what happened, um, you know, and, and why you're fighting for this cause or whatever whatever it is. Um, so I definitely want anybody, uh, let me see if anybody put any questions, comments. Uh, I know Caitlin, she said, uh, a- anger stems from hurt and disappointment. Um, uh, she says, like I said, she said she's going to need all three of those copies. Uh and like she's, like you talked about how you know you impacting this corner of the world, then that that person to be able to go and make a difference in someone else's life. And then let me, I got okay. So I I do I I do I got, I'm gonna say this one last question uh, for you to end it off on. But uh, do you have any question for me? Right? Because I have a little tell them kill them portion of the segment where I allow. If I'm interviewing somebody, I allow my guests to, to ask me a question or whoever may be watching, they could drop a question in the chat. But do you have a question? I like you to be the the uh interviewer. Wow. Mm. One question. One question. <laughs> um, who in black history has impacted your life the most? Ooh. God, that was a good one. That was quick too, but it was it was deep though. So who <laughs> Who in black history 
impact did. I, I would have to say, uh, as I learn more, but I would say just Carter G. Woodson, right? Um, and I would say that because, to your point, it started with a vision, right? Mm -hmm. um, and realizing the the need of it or the necessity of it. I'm pretty sure, you know, it might have been others that inspired him prior to, but him being, you know, considered like the God of the Black history and all of that. But I, I would say just him just having a vision and, and it being bigger than him. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't like, hey, did everybody know about me? No. We need to know about our own history, others, and the contributions that other people have made. And when we look at it, like you said, Black history is American history. We won't, we we really built this country for free. And, and, and it's so if we take away, we just say, okay, take away all the Black contributions from African-American Black people. Man, uh, we, it, it'd be a lot of things we'll be going through life without. So I would have to, I would have to say him. Say him. That was a good question. Good question. So, so my question, my question for you, uh, right, is, do you believe? I think I know the answer, but do you believe that African American history should be taught more in our schools? And how, if they gave you, put you in control of it, how would you go about um, putting that curriculum together? Wow. That's a good question. You know, I, I'm trying to take your lead. I'm taking it from you now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, when we talk about public school, mm -hmm. right, public school suggests that the school is to serve or educate those children that are part of the public or part of society, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, the education or the curriculum should reflect the needs of those who are part of the public, not just in um, exclusive pockets of the public, right? Okay. Therefore, it should reflect or address the needs that an individual has, and that being knowing their history. So, yes, I think it should be a part of that, that person's history. And not and being like you mentioned earlier, all the different uh, nationalities and ethnicities that are expressed in your class mm -hmm. um it there also ought to be opportunities there for if you're hispanic that should be part of the curriculum if you are egyptian mm -hmm. there should be some kind of way if you are in a public school there should be some kind of option some kind of choice something that will help to you in your education that identifies with your cultural heritage yes i do think that I do. I do think that. Now, what would that uh, curriculum look like? The curriculum would reflect that, right? The mm -hmm. curriculum would reflect what those needs are. But what I love about, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, my dissertation was the effectiveness of African-centered education. And man, what I learned about us as a people and how we learn, it is and different isn't wrong. Different is 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 good right because mm -hmm. it's unique to the person right yes, and, and we are a communal people right so we learn by connecting and, and working in in groups together yeah. we learn with music we learn with rhythm and, yeah. and, and and those things so the curriculum would reflect the culture of of our people right yeah. the curriculum will also a lot of people don't understand you know of course we're in a public setting and there has to be a a a line between church and state but if you look at the history of who we are as african people everything we did god was in the center mm -hmm. god was in the center of it so as it pertains if i'm creating a curriculum as you to answer your question that yes. addresses the needs of African people, then it would be not teaching religion because it's not about religion. It's just mm -hmm. about the understanding of the divine being in the center and everything else revolving Working around it. And yes. understanding that the African-American, man, you're making my mind go back to that dissertation, that the, uh, the mind, understanding that the education of the African-American is in the center of learning and not on the outside of the circle, but is in the, the center, center. The center. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like now, so because a lot of times we uh, African Americans have to just get the crumbs and fall from the table and hope yeah. they get something. But if you are the focus and the center of that, then 
then you're going to get everything because it revolves around you and mm -hmm. what you need. So, so basically, if I, so if I, if we, if we apply that to every child, if every child is the center of their own education, then, hey, you may learn through music. You may learn through X, Y, Z, but all your education is centered around your needs, what uh, relates to you and how it connects to you, yes. right? Now, understand, we're talking about a perfect, what would be in a perfect situation. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, oh, yes, ma'am. Because, you know, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to act like, you know, that uh, we can just drop it and this can be done, and it's, mm -hmm. it's easy, but we can make changes and mm -hmm. add things and, 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 um, make revisions so that needs are better met because it's difficult when you got 30 people in the, in the classroom oh, it's, and, oh. you got, and you have all these different needs and then you have all these different ethnicities but your question was if i could write a curriculum what would it look like now that now some things are different in in theory than in practice right yeah <laughs> and, yeah and yeah, yeah. Right? So but you did just though. dream it up right yeah but the application of that you know would take some serious planning Definitely, definitely, but but it, I I definitely uh, like that plan. I think you know, just even in my own, you know, within my own, uh, I guess, a circle of influence that I can do that. Um, you know, even in the subject that I teach, I, I I know that I can improve and get better, and making sure that um, I tap into or I give when kids scholars walk in my classroom that they can get some um, resource, see some resemblance of them. You know, when I enter into my classroom, yes. I, oh, think, I think so that's, uh, you know, just with the multicultural education aspect of it, just being able to, hey, you walk in my classroom, hey, I don't, even I didn't do this this year, it's a little different, you know, but hey, you might see LeBron on there, but you might see, uh, you know, uh, a soccer player or whatever, or you know, I did do this at my other school, I, I, my scholars, they wanted to control the ox court, so, you know, we out there whipping, nay, nay, and all that, right? But then I had I had one of my Hispanic scholars come. It was like, can we get the ox? Sure. This is your classroom too. And I'm a, my, you know, my, 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 my black student, they're looking at me like, man, who got the ox? I'm like, don't worry about it. You know, this, you know, this their time. But I wanted them to feel welcome when they come to class as well. So something, you know, as simple as that. But um definitely, I definitely uh, agree with what you're saying. Um, I know we're a little over an hour right now, so I'm gonna just wrap it up. I Thank you so, 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 so much, Dr. Free. Um, like I said, I'm definitely going to copy your books. Um, you know, I'm going to send this, uh, save this to my IGTV, and then I'm going to do my best to screen record it uh, and put it on YouTube, and then I'll make sure you'll be able to get the link and everything. You'll be able to do what you need to do or want to do with it. Um, I want you to close us out with your la last words. Just Okay, something. well, just want to make sure that people know how to get in contact with me. You can go to uh, my Website is AuthenticThought.net, AuthenticThought.net. You can get information on the books. You can get information more about me and what I do. You can go to Authenticity-Academy.Teachable.com for the online school. Also, um, if you're interested in um, knowing more about the books, um, if need be too, you can go to exlibris.com. The books are available in soft copy, but they're also available if you want to just download them on uh, your tablet or your iPad, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Really inexpensive that can really add um, to your um, to your, the life of your children. And what could I say in closing? Just one of the things, my whole thing is all about being authentic, right? And we can waste our lives trying to be something that we're not when we because we're ignoring the gift of who we are right mm -hmm. just just embrace you and be you and know that who we are is enough who we are is enough definitely that well that's how we're gonna end it who we are is enough thank you so much dr free i appreciate you um, thank y'all for those that watch. Man, you can catch this on replay on my IGTV. Um, catch it next week on my YouTube page, Jeremy Kellum slash Winpat Now slash Win. Make sure you continue to wake up striving to win on purpose. Be intentional about winning. And y'all have a blessed day. Have a blessed day, Dr. Free. Thank you so much.